Which animal has the longest life? The animal believed to have had the longest lifespan ever. Recorded was a Marian's tortoise that lived over 152 years. Several other types of tortoises have been known to live longer than 115 years. Clams also tend to live a very long time, with a quahog, pronounced kaohog. Living around 150 years and a deep sea clam living around 100 years. The oldest person on record lived 122 years. Which animal has the shortest life? Many insects have very short lives, existing for only a few days. The mayfly has the shortest lifespan. In the adult stage, the mayfly often lives just a few hours long enough to mate and for the females, to deposit their fertilized eggs. Male mayflies perform an acrobatic mating dance over water as the sun goes down. They are then joined in the dance by the females. Mayflies, also called fish flies, arrive in swarms in areas near bodies of fresh water. The pre-adult stages are aquatic, meaning they live in water. They coat streets and driveways and cling to screen doors and cars. While their fishy odor is unpleasant, the presence of mayflies indicates that the body of water is healthy. Why should I cover my mouth and nose when I cough and sneeze? Coughing and sneezing spray germs into the air, where other people can breathe them in. It's very common for colds and other infections to be spread from one person to another by the germs expelled when a sick person coughs or sneezes. When you cover your mouth or nose when you cough or sneeze. You catch some germs in your tissue or hands which keeps them from entering the air. But another common way of spreading germs is through physical contact. Especially from the hand of one person to another. So it is important to wash your hands, too, after you cough or sneeze. Even better than covering your mouth with your hand is coughing or sneezing onto your shirt sleeve in the crook of your elbow. That way, the germs from your mouth end up on your sleeve, which is far less likely than your hand to have contact with other people. And the germs on your sleeve will soon die if they aren't passed along to another person. What causes a fever? The average temperature of the human body, when measured under the tongue, is around 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit, 37 degrees Celsius. You have a fever when your body temperature goes higher than this. Scientists believe that fever is part of the body's defense system against infection. 
the higher temperature may kill the germs causing it or may speed up the body's defenses. Like white blood cell and antibody production, against it. So a fever is a good thing, a sign that your body is working hard to get better. Medicines to reduce fever aren't really necessary unless a person's temperature gets dangerously high above 102 degrees Fahrenheit, 38.8 degrees Celsius. In children and 104 degrees Fahrenheit, 40 degrees Celsius, in adults. At such high temperatures, the human body can no longer cool itself by flushing. Releasing heat through surface blood vessels, and sweating. A cold bath or cold wet cloths on the skin can lower a very high fever before it does serious damage to the body. What is the largest animal in the world? The largest animal in the world is the blue whale. It can reach a length of 110 feet, 33.5 meters, and weigh more than 150 tons, 300,000 pounds. Its head makes up nearly one quarter of its body, and its heart is the size of a small car. It is thought to be the largest animal that has ever lived, bigger than the largest dinosaur. Even a baby blue whale is bigger than an elephant, which is the largest land animal. There are two types of whales, toothed whales, which use their teeth to catch fish and squid. That they usually swallow whole, and baleen whales, which are toothless. But have sheets of a horny substance called baleen attached to their upper jaws. The baleen works like a giant strainer. Letting water including tiny plant and animal life called plankton move back and forth through it. Loads of plankton are trapped behind the baleen and then swallowed. The blue whale is an example of a baleen whale. Which means that the largest creature in the world feeds on some of the smallest plants and animals that exist. What starts a sneeze? Anything that irritates the lining of your nose can start a sneeze. A cold or infection can irritate the inside of your nose. As can things that are breathed in like dust and pollen. The fine hairs that line your nose are connected to nerve endings. And when they send a message to your brain that something is there that shouldn't be, your brain tells certain muscles to get rid of it. Your throat closes while air pressure builds up in your lungs. When the air is suddenly let go, it blows dust or germs or other things from your nose. During a powerful sneeze, air can exit your lungs at around 100 miles, 161 kilometers, per hour. Why can I smell things better when I sniff hard? The air that you breathe through your nose passes into your nasal cavity. Making its way to your throat and lungs. Located on the top of your nasal cavity is your olfactory, or smell, center. 
there, scent particles from the air you breathe are caught in a thick batch of olfactory hairs that send nerve impulses. Via the olfactory nerve, to your brain, which recognizes them as smells. When you breathe normally, the air that you take in is not usually directed toward your olfactory center. But when you sniff hard, you take in a lot more air, and it travels toward the top of your nasal cavity. You can detect smells more easily then. When you hold your nose to keep from smelling a bad scent, you breathe through your mouth. Which keeps most of the incoming air from reaching in your olfactory hairs. Which animal is the most intelligent? Ask five scientists to list the most intelligent animals, and you'll get five different lists. Most experts believe that humans are the most evolved, complex, intelligent animals, but there are some people who question this. Part of the problem in determining the most intelligent animals is that there are several different kinds of intelligence, the ability to communicate, to adapt to the environment, and to solve problems. And scientists have always struggled to learn how an animal's mind works when communication between animals and humans is so limited. Many studies have shown that primates are the most intelligent animals. The primate family includes human beings as well as chimpanzees, gorillas, orangutans, baboons, gibbons, and monkeys, those animals, with chimps at the top of the list, hold the top six spots on biologist Edward O. Wilson's list of the ten most intelligent animals aside from humans. Primates have large, complex brains. And they can build complicated cultures and, to some degree, control their environment. They can communicate with others of their species and develop language skills. Several marine animals, including the killer whale and many dolphin species, have been listed as some of the most intelligent animals on the planet. Elephants and pigs are also believed to be highly intelligent. What causes a yawn? When you are bored or tired you sometimes give a big yawn. Yawning happens because you are not breathing deeply enough. Oxygen, the gas needed to run body processes, and carbon dioxide, the waste gas produced by these processes. Travel in your bloodstream and enter and exit your body through your lungs. When you don't breathe deeply enough, too much carbon dioxide builds up in your body and your brain gets the message. Telling you to breathe more deeply to fix the problem. A yawn is a great big breath that clears carbon dioxide from your lungs and forces you to take in fresh, oxygen-rich air. Sometimes a series of yawns is required. Scientists don't know why yawning seems to be contagious. But it usually is, when one person yawns, others often start yawning, too.
What does it mean when an animal is extinct? Extinction happens when a species of plant or animal dies out completely. Extinction is a permanent state, once a species is extinct, it cannot be revived. Scientists believe that extinction usually occurs when a species cannot adapt to major changes to its environment. Some species adapt dramatically to such changes, and in doing so they become an entirely new species. Meaning the species they evolved from becomes extinct. The actions of human beings have caused numerous extinctions. At one time many people believed that Earth's resources fresh water, trees, fuel sources, animals used for food were unlimited. People have hunted or fished for an animal in such great numbers that the deaths outnumbered births. And the species could not survive. Tearing down forests or filling in swamps to build homes, golf courses. Or shopping malls has had a great impact on animal life, many animals can no longer survive if their habitat is destroyed. Pollution of the air, soil, and water has also been a factor in the destruction of many species. It's important to remember that while human beings have caused the extinction of many species, we also have the ability to protect and save endangered plants and animals. Wildlife preservation laws and organizations like the Sierra Club first arose in the late 1800s. After people began to realize the devastating impact their actions could have on animal species. Widespread hunting of the American bison, for example. Reduced the animal's population from 60 million in 1860 to only about 550 just 30 years later. Such a huge and fast reduction in the bison's numbers alarmed many people. In 1966 the U.S. Congress passed the important Endangered Species Protection Act. Which meant that animals whose populations were shrinking could be protected from hunters and land developers. That law, and many others passed since then, has generated controversy in situations where the building of a bridge or dam or airport could threaten an endangered species but would help the people living nearby. As the world's population continues to grow, with more and more people living in what used to be animal habitats, such conflicts are likely to increase. Of all the animal and plant species that have ever lived, far more than half are now extinct. On the other hand, new species develop and are discovered all the time. So a balance between death and new life is maintained. What does it mean when an animal is extinct? Extinction happens when a species of plant or animal dies out completely. Extinction is a permanent state, once a species is extinct, it cannot be revived. Scientists believe that extinction usually occurs when a species cannot adapt to major changes to its environment. Some species adapt dramatically to such changes, and in doing so they become an entirely new species. Meaning the species they evolved from becomes extinct. The actions of human beings have caused numerous extinctions. 
At one time many people believed that Earth's resources fresh water, trees, fuel sources, animals used for food were unlimited. People have hunted or fished for an animal in such great numbers that the deaths outnumbered births. And the species could not survive. Tearing down forests or filling in swamps to build homes, golf courses. Or shopping malls has had a great impact on animal life, many animals can no longer survive if their habitat is destroyed. Pollution of the air, soil, and water has also been a factor in the destruction of many species. It's important to remember that while human beings have caused the extinction of many species, we also have the ability to protect and save endangered plants and animals. Wildlife preservation laws and organizations like the Sierra Club first arose in the late 1800s. After people began to realize the devastating impact their actions could have on animal species. Widespread hunting of the American bison, for example. Reduced the animal's population from 60 million in 1860 to only about 550 just 30 years later. Such a huge and fast reduction in the bison's numbers alarmed many people. In 1966 the U.S. Congress passed the important Endangered Species Protection Act. Which meant that animals whose populations were shrinking could be protected from hunters and land developers. That law, and many others passed since then, has generated controversy in situations where the building of a bridge or dam or airport could threaten an endangered species but would help the people living nearby. As the world's population continues to grow, with more and more people living in what used to be animal habitats, such conflicts are likely to increase. Of all the animal and plant species that have ever lived, far more than half are now extinct. On the other hand, new species develop and are discovered all the time. So a balance between death and new life is maintained. What does it mean if an animal is an endangered species? There are many organizations in the United States and all over the world that study and research plant and animal species. Determining which ones may be headed for extinction. Any species in such danger is described as endangered. Once a species is endangered, it becomes illegal to hunt that animal or destroy its habitat. In 2001 the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, the organization that maintains the nation's list of endangered and threatened plants and animals, listed over 1,000 animals and nearly 750 plants worldwide. Threatened species are those that might soon become endangered. The goal of such organizations is to help a species recover to the point that it no longer needs to be listed as endangered. What does it mean if an animal is an endangered species? There are many organizations in the United States and all over the world that study and research plant and animal species. Determining which ones may be headed for extinction. 
any species in such danger is described as endangered. Once a species is endangered, it becomes illegal to hunt that animal or destroy its habitat. In 2001 the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, the organization that maintains the nation's list of endangered and threatened plants and animals, listed over 1,000 animals and nearly 750 plants worldwide. Threatened species are those that might soon become endangered. The goal of such organizations is to help a species recover to the point that it no longer needs to be listed as endangered. What is bioluminescence? Bioluminescence is the ability of some organisms, like fireflies, to light up. This phenomenon occurs in some protozoa, fungi, ocean-dwelling invertebrates. Such as some species of shrimp and squid, and even some fish, anglerfish and hatchetfish. It does not occur in more highly developed animals like birds, reptiles, amphibians, and mammals. The light results from a chemical reaction. And scientists believe it serves a variety of functions in animals. Sometimes animals use their light to confuse or scare their enemies. And sometimes it is used to attract a mate. For some deep sea creatures, their body light may help them see in an otherwise completely dark environment. What is bioluminescence? Bioluminescence is the ability of some organisms, like fireflies, to light up. This phenomenon occurs in some protozoa, fungi, ocean-dwelling invertebrates. Such as some species of shrimp and squid, and even some fish, anglerfish and hatchetfish. It does not occur in more highly developed animals like birds, reptiles, amphibians, and mammals. The light results from a chemical reaction. And scientists believe it serves a variety of functions in animals. Sometimes animals use their light to confuse or scare their enemies. And sometimes it is used to attract a mate. For some deep sea creatures, their body light may help them see in an otherwise completely dark environment. Why, and how, do animals change color? Many animals can change their color, some over a period of seconds and others over several months. Cephalopods, a group including octopuses and squids, are especially skillful at changing color rapidly, they can turn different colors in less than a second. Their color changes are usually triggered by a heightened state excitement or fear. Which brings on an amazing display of different colors spreading over their bodies. Several kinds of fish and some amphibians and lizards are also able to change colors. Though their transformations take a bit more time than those of the cephalopods. 
color changes take place in special pigment cells called chromatophores. Changing the size of these cells moves the pigment around, altering the animal's coloration. Such animals change their colors for a number of reasons. Those that can rapidly change colors do so to startle or confuse predators or to better blend in with their environments, a technique known as camouflaging. Camouflaging can either be used by an animal that wants to hide from an attacker or by an animal that doesn't want to be seen by its prey. Color changes can also be used to attract a mate. Some animals undergo color changes with a change in seasons. Certain mammals and birds that live in cold climates, for example, have white fur and feathers in the winter so they can blend in with the snow and be less noticeable to their predators. Some songbirds will grow brightly colored, attractive feathers for the mating season. Those feathers are replaced by duller colors after mating is over. These color changes are also caused by pigment cells, located beneath the fur or feathers. Why, and how, do animals change color? Many animals can change their color, some over a period of seconds and others over several months. Cephalopods, a group including octopuses and squids are especially skillful at changing color rapidly, they can turn different colors in less than a second. Their color changes are usually triggered by a heightened state excitement or fear, which brings on an amazing display of different colors spreading over their bodies. Several kinds of fish and some amphibians and lizards are also able to change colors. Though their transformations take a bit more time than those of the cephalopods. Color changes take place in special pigment cells called chromatophores. Changing the size of these cells moves the pigment around, altering the animal's coloration. Such animals change their colors for a number of reasons. Those that can rapidly change colors do so to startle or confuse predators or to better blend in with their environments, a technique known as camouflaging. Camouflaging can either be used by an animal that wants to hide from an attacker or by an animal that doesn't want to be seen by its prey. Color changes can also be used to attract a mate. Some animals undergo color changes with a change in seasons. Certain mammals and birds that live in cold climates, for example, have white fur and feathers in the winter so they can blend in with the snow and be less noticeable to their predators. Some songbirds will grow brightly colored attractive feathers for the mating season. Those feathers are replaced by duller colors after mating is over. These color changes are also caused by pigment cells, located beneath the fur or feathers. What is mimicry? Mimicry is the ability some animals have to resemble another animal. 
so closely that they can fool either their prey or their predators. For example, the beautiful and brightly colored monarch butterfly has a foul taste. And most birds will avoid eating it. The viceroy butterfly, with its similarly colored orange and black wings, looks so much like the monarch that most birds are fooled and will also avoid the viceroy. The American zone tailed hawk has similar color and body shape to that of a certain kind of vulture. Vultures do not attack live animals, they eat only carrion. Which is the flesh of animals that are already dead, so small animals on the ground are not afraid of them. The zone tailed hawk flies in groups with these vultures, disguising itself among them. And then swoops down on unsuspecting rodents that didn't recognize the hawk in time to scurry away. The red milk snake, which is harmless, has color patterns similar to the deadly coral snake. A potential enemy could easily mistake the milk snake for the coral snake and thinking it is venomous, leave it alone. What is mimicry? Mimicry is the ability some animals have to resemble another animal. So closely that they can fool either their prey or their predators. For example, the beautiful and brightly colored monarch butterfly has a foul taste. And most birds will avoid eating it. The viceroy butterfly, with its similarly colored orange and black wings, looks so much like the monarch that most birds are fooled and will also avoid the viceroy. The American zone tailed hawk has similar color and body shape to that of a certain kind of vulture. Vultures do not attack live animals. They eat only carrion, which is the flesh of animals that are already dead, so small animals on the ground are not afraid of them. The zone tailed hawk flies in groups with these vultures, disguising itself among them, and then swoops down on unsuspecting rodents that didn't recognize the hawk in time to scurry away. The red milk snake, which is harmless, has color patterns similar to the deadly coral snake. A potential enemy could easily mistake the milk snake for the coral snake and thinking it is venomous, leave it alone. Can some animals grow a new limb after one has been cut off? There are many creatures that have the ability to replace body parts that have been lost. In fact, this process, called regeneration, happens in all living things at some level, life is not possible without regeneration. Generally, the more complex the organism, the less dramatic the regeneration. Human beings can replace old skin cells with new ones, for example. While a certain species of flatworm can regenerate a new head and tail basically a whole new worm from any one of its segments. A hydra, a freshwater invertebrate with a tube-like body that has several tentacles at one end. Has such amazing regenerative ability that an Entirely new hydra can be regrown from just a tiny fragment of the animal. Several insects, 
if they lose a limb before they reach their adult stage, can grow a new one. Crustaceans like crabs and lobsters can replace lost claws or legs with new ones. Even some vertebrates, which are more highly developed than invertebrates, are capable of some amazing regeneration. Bony fish, a group that includes salmon, tuna, and most other creatures we think of as fish, can regrow a fin, though the group of fish that includes sharks cannot. Some amphibians can replace lost limbs with new ones. While some lizards can grow a new tail if the old one gets cut off. Birds cannot grow new limbs though their ability to replace old feathers and sometimes beaks with new ones is a type of regeneration. The regeneration that mammals are capable of is more modest deer produce new antlers every year. For example, but no mammal can regrow a new limb or tail. Can some animals grow a new limb after one has been cut off? There are many creatures that have the ability to replace body parts that have been lost. In fact, this process, called regeneration, happens in all living things at some level. Life is not possible without regeneration. Generally, the more complex the organism, the less dramatic the regeneration. Human beings can replace old skin cells with new ones, for example. While a certain species of flatworm can regenerate a new head and tail basically a whole new worm from any one of its segments. A hydra, a freshwater invertebrate with a tube-like body that has several tentacles at one end, has such amazing regenerative ability that an entirely new hydra can be regrown from just a tiny fragment of the animal. Several insects, if they lose a limb before they reach their adult stage, can grow a new one. Crustaceans like crabs and lobsters can replace lost claws or legs with new ones. Even some vertebrates, which are more highly developed than invertebrates, are capable of some amazing regeneration. Bony fish, a group that includes salmon, tuna, and most other creatures we think of as fish, can regrow a fin though the group of fish that includes sharks cannot. Some amphibians can replace lost limbs with new ones. While some lizards can grow a new tail if the old one gets cut off. Birds cannot grow new limbs, though their ability to replace old. Feathers and sometimes beaks with new ones is a type of regeneration. The regeneration that mammals are capable of is more modest deer produce new antlers every year. For example, but no mammal can regrow a new limb or tail. What are bugs? Most people use the word bug when talking about insects like beetles, bees, and butterflies. And other small, many-legged creatures that crawl, jump, or fly, such as spiders and centipedes. All of these critters belong to the same phylum, called Arthropoda. Which also includes crustaceans, 
like lobsters and crabs. Arthropods have hard skeletons on the outside of their bodies. Called exoskeletons, and they also have jointed limbs, arthropod means jointed feet. Arthropods make up more than 80% of the world's animal species. The word bug does correspond with an official category, though, in the scientific world. A true bug is classified as an insect that belongs to the order Hemiptera. The insects in this order can be recognized by the X-shaped pattern on their backs. A design formed by their wings at rest. They also have sucking mouth parts and a hardened gula, which is the underside of the head. The 30,000 species of the Hemipteran order include bed bugs, fire bugs, and some water bugs. What are bugs? Most people use the word bug when talking about insects like beetles, bees, and butterflies. And other small, many-legged creatures that crawl, jump, or fly, such as spiders and centipedes. All of these critters belong to the same phylum, called Arthropoda. Which also includes crustaceans, like lobsters and crabs. Arthropods have hard skeletons on the outside of their bodies. Called exoskeletons, and they also have jointed limbs, arthropod means jointed feet. Arthropods make up more than 80% of the world's animal species. The word bug does correspond with an official category, though, in the scientific world. A true bug is classified as an insect that belongs to the order Hemiptera. The insects in this order can be recognized by the X-shaped pattern on their backs. A design formed by their wings at rest. They also have sucking mouth parts and a hardened gula, which is the underside of the head. The 30,000 species of the Hemipteran order include bed bugs, fire bugs, and some water bugs. How many different kinds of insects are there? More than 980,000 species of arthropods exist, and most of those are insects. Estimates vary, but some scientists believe there are around 900,000 known species of insects. And many more species are yet to be discovered. Some experts believe there may be as many as 10 million different kinds of insects. How many different kinds of insects are there? More than 980,000 species of arthropods exist, and most of those are insects. Estimates vary, but some scientists believe there are around 900,000 known species of insects. And many more species are yet to be discovered. Some experts believe there may be as many as 10 million different kinds of insects. Why are there so many insects?
There are so many insects because they are essential to life on Earth and play many important roles in keeping our planet healthy. Most of the world's flowering plants, about 80%, are pollinated by insects. Insects carry pollen from the male parts of a blossom to the female parts of another plant's flower, allowing reproduction. Most of our fruits and vegetables are the result of this kind of plant reproduction. Insects also feed on the remains of dead plants and animals, keeping our environment clean and returning nitrogen, carbon, and other valuable elements to the soil in their waste. In addition, insects are a vital part of Earth's food chain, providing nourishment for one another. There are many thousands of insect-eating insects. As well as for reptiles and amphibians, for birds and fish, and for mammals, such as mice and bats. In many parts of the world, insects even make up an important part of the human diet. Why are there so many insects? There are so many insects because they are essential to life on Earth and play many important roles in keeping our planet healthy. Most of the world's flowering plants, about 80%, are pollinated by insects. Insects carry pollen from the male parts of a blossom to the female parts of another plant's flower, allowing reproduction. Most of our fruits and vegetables are the result of this kind of plant reproduction. Insects also feed on the remains of dead plants and animals, keeping our environment clean and returning nitrogen, carbon, and other valuable elements to the soil in their waste. In addition, insects are a vital part of Earth's food chain, providing nourishment for one another. There are many thousands of insect-eating insects. As well as for reptiles and amphibians, for birds and fish, and for mammals, such as mice and bats. In many parts of the world, insects even make up an important part of the human diet. Why do mosquitoes bite? Just female mosquitoes bite, male mosquitoes feed only on fruit and plant juices. The female mosquito bites people, and other animals, to feed on their blood. She needs blood so that her eggs can develop properly before they are laid. One way a female mosquito locates a victim is by feeling the body heat of an animal as she flies by it. Why do mosquitoes bite? Just female mosquitoes bite, male mosquitoes feed only on fruit and plant juices. The female mosquito bites people, and other animals, to feed on their blood. She needs blood so that her eggs can develop properly before they are laid. One way a female mosquito locates a victim is by feeling the body heat of an animal as she flies by it. Why do mosquito bites itch?
with her long, slender mouth parts. A female mosquito pierces the skin of her victim in order to suck its blood. She injects a substance that keeps the blood from clotting, an anticoagulant, before she drinks her fill. This foreign substance in the blood activates the victim's immune system, causing an allergic reaction around the bite. This reaction causes the swelling and itching that drive us crazy. Why do mosquito bites itch? With her long, slender mouth parts. A female mosquito pierces the skin of her victim in order to suck its blood. She injects a substance that keeps the blood from clotting, an anticoagulant, before she drinks her fill. This foreign substance in the blood activates the victim's immune system, causing an allergic reaction around the bite. This reaction causes the swelling and itching that drive us crazy. How do bees make honey? Honeybees collect sweet nectar from flowers and bring it back to their nests or hives. There it is stored for future use, for its sugar provides honeybees with the energy they need. The nectar is stored as honey, which is a thick, concentrated form of nectar that has been converted in the bees' digestive tracts. Honey is stored in many little compartments or cells in the nest, called a hive, which the bees seal over with wax something they also produce. We call this honey-filled wax honeycomb. Beekeepers take honeycomb from the hive, leaving enough behind for the bees. Using the wax for candle making and the honey to sweeten all kinds of foods. How do bees make honey? Honey bees collect sweet nectar from flowers and bring it back to their nests or hives. There it is stored for future use, for its sugar provides honeybees with the energy they need. The nectar is stored as honey, which is a thick, concentrated form of nectar that has been converted in the bees' digestive tracts. Honey is stored in many little compartments or cells in the nest, called a hive which the bees seal over with wax something they also produce. We call this honey-filled wax honeycomb. Beekeepers take honeycomb from the hive, leaving enough behind for the bees. Using the wax for candle making and the honey to sweeten all kinds of foods. What are invertebrates? It may seem that most of the world's animals are vertebrates what's left after mammals. Birds, reptiles, amphibians, and fish. In fact, invertebrates make up more than 90% of the world's living animals. Any animal that lacks a backbone is an invertebrate. They do not have a bony skeleton, but many do possess a hard, shell-like exterior. 
Invertebrates include insects, worms, crustaceans, like crabs and lobsters. Mollusks, clams and oysters, and arachnids, spiders, scorpions, and ticks. Why should I wash my hands after I go to the bathroom? Feces contain a lot of bacteria. Once solid waste exits the body it attracts more bacteria. Which use it as nourishment to grow and multiply. While some types of bacteria are harmless, other kinds can cause infections and other problems. When you wipe yourself after going to the bathroom, you may get invisible traces of waste on your hands and transfer the bacteria in it to other parts of your body or to objects that others may touch. But this problem can be eliminated by a good hand washing with warm water and soap for about two minutes. Because we live closely with one another ER, it is important to follow rules of cleanliness or hygiene, to protect our own health and the health of others. Why do some people need to take naps? Young kids need naps to keep them healthy and safe. Their bodies are growing and changing at a rapid rate, which requires a lot of energy. In addition, the world is filled with so many interesting things to discover and so many new skills to learn. And all that stimulation can make a child pretty tired. Whether big or little, people don't perform at their best mentally or physically when they are too tired. Often when you're tired it takes twice as much energy to perform a task that you could easily do if you were rested. Sometimes being too tired makes you less coordinated and clumsy. And you might think less clearly, which could lead you to hurt yourself. Taking a short rest allows your body to slow down for a while so that it can regain the energy it needs to continue performing at its best. What are vertebrates? Vertebrata, or vertebrates, are a subphylum of the phylum called Chaudata. Human beings, as well as most of the animals we experience in our everyday lives mammals, birds, reptiles, amphibians, fish are classified as vertebrates. The most obvious characteristic of vertebrates is a backbone, which can be made of bone or cartilage. Vertebrates have a complex spinal cord that runs along the length of the animal's body and contains a nervous system. At the top of the spinal cord is a brain and sense organs that allow animals to see, hear, and smell. Vertebrates also have bodies that are bilaterally symmetrical. Which means that the left side is basically a mirror image of the right. There are 45,000 living vertebrate species. Vertebrates live in nearly every region of the world, adapting to life on land, in the air, and in the sea.
How many different kinds of insects are there? More than 980,000 species of arthropods exist, and most of those are insects. Estimates vary, but some scientists believe there are around 900,000 known species of insects. And many more species are yet to be discovered. Some experts believe there may be as many as 10 million different kinds of insects. Why, and how, do animals change color? Many animals can change their color, some over a period of seconds and others over several months. Cephalopods, a group including octopuses and squids. Are especially skillful at changing color rapidly, they can turn different colors in less than a second. Their color changes are usually triggered by a heightened state excitement or fear, which brings on an amazing display of different colors spreading over their bodies. Several kinds of fish and some amphibians and lizards are also able to change colors. Though their transformations take a bit more time than those of the cephalopods. Color changes take place in special pigment cells called chromatophores. Changing the size of these cells moves the pigment around, altering the animal's coloration. Such animals change their colors for a number of reasons. Those that can rapidly change colors do so to startle or confuse predators or to better blend in with their environments, a technique known as camouflaging. Camouflaging can either be used by an animal that wants to hide from an attacker or by an animal that doesn't want to be seen by its prey. Color changes can also be used to attract a mate. Some animals undergo color changes with a change in seasons. Certain mammals and birds that live in cold climates, for example, have white fur and feathers in the winter so they can blend in with the snow and be less noticeable to their predators. Some songbirds will grow brightly colored attractive feathers for the mating season. Those feathers are replaced by duller colors after mating is over. These color changes are also caused by pigment cells, located beneath the fur or feathers. Why shouldn't I pick my nose? Your nose traps germs and dust and other impurities in the air. Before they can travel to your lungs, so it is a pretty dirty place. When you pick your nose those germs and more get on your fingers and can be passed to others through touch. A tissue which can be quickly thrown away should be used to wipe or clean your nose. Picking your nose could also damage the many blood vessels in your nose's thin lining, causing a nosebleed. The insides of noses are not large enough for searching fingers. Most people consider it bad manners, not to mention gross, to pick your nose in front of others. Nose picking is an unhealthy practice that shows a lack of concern for others as you spread your germs around.
What are animals? Animals are all the creatures belonging to the kingdom Animalia. Ranging in complexity from simple organisms like sponges to highly developed human beings. Some of the other kingdoms are planty, which encompasses things like grass, trees, and flowers. And fungi, which are things like mold and mushrooms. Animals make up at least three quarters of all the species on Earth. And they are distinguished from plants and other organisms by their ability to move. Even tiny animals have muscles and therefore can get around to find food or a mate. Or to get away from enemies. While humans are animals. Often when people use the word animal they are referring to all animals except humans. Sometimes people are referring specifically to mammals warm-blooded creatures like dogs. Cows, or lions as opposed to birds, reptiles, or fish. Can some animals grow a new limb after one has been cut off? There are many creatures that have the ability to replace body parts that have been lost. In fact, this process, called regeneration, happens in all living things at some level, Life is not possible without regeneration. Generally, the more complex the organism, the less dramatic the regeneration. Human beings can replace old skin cells with new ones, for example. While a certain species of flatworm can regenerate a new head and tail basically a whole new worm from any one of its segments. A hydra, a freshwater invertebrate with a tube-like body that has several tentacles at one end. Has such amazing regenerative ability that an entirely new hydra can be regrown from just a tiny fragment of the animal. Several insects, if they lose a limb before they reach their adult stage, can grow a new one. Crustaceans like crabs and lobsters can replace lost claws or legs with new ones. Even some vertebrates, which are more highly developed than invertebrates, are capable of some amazing regeneration. Bony fish, a group that includes salmon, tuna, and most other creatures we think of as fish, can regrow a fin though the group of fish that includes sharks cannot. Some amphibians can replace lost limbs with new ones. While some lizards can grow a new tail if the old one gets cut off. Birds cannot grow new limbs, though their ability to replace old. Feathers and sometimes beaks with new ones is a type of regeneration. The regeneration that mammals are capable of is more modest deer produce new antlers every year. For example, but no mammal can regrow a new limb or tail. How many different kinds of animals are there? Experts estimate that over 1 million different kinds of animals have been identified in the world. There may be millions more, particularly insect species, that have not yet been identified or discovered by scientists. 
Hundreds of years ago scientists began dividing the animal kingdom into categories based on certain characteristics like body type, ways of reproducing, and what the animals can do, fly, swim, walk on two legs, and so on. The animal kingdom, and every other kingdom as well. Is divided and subdivided into numerous other categories. If animal classification categories were viewed as an upside down pyramid, kingdom the largest and broadest classification would be at the top. The animal kingdom is divided into several different parts, called phyla. The singular form of that word is phylum. Each phylum is further divided into classes. The other levels of division are order, family, genus, and species. With species being the tip of that upside down pyramid, or the most specific way to categorize. When scientists give the official name for a type of animal, they use the genus and species names. Human beings are part of the genus Homo and the species Sapiens. Therefore, our scientific name is Homo Sapiens. What are bugs? Most people use the word bug when talking about insects like beetles, bees, and butterflies. And other small, many-legged creatures that crawl, jump, or fly, such as spiders and centipedes. All of these critters belong to the same phylum, called Arthropoda. Which also includes crustaceans, like lobsters and crabs. Arthropods have hard skeletons on the outside of their bodies. Called exoskeletons, and they also have jointed limbs, arthropod means jointed feet. Arthropods make up more than 80% of the world's animal species. The word bug does correspond with an official category, though, in the scientific world. A true bug is classified as an insect that belongs to the order Hemiptera. The insects in this order can be recognized by the X-shaped pattern on their backs. A design formed by their wings at rest. They also have sucking mouth parts and a hardened gula, which is the underside of the head. The 30,000 species of the Hemipteran order include bedbugs, fire bugs, and some water bugs. Why are there so many insects? There are so many insects because they are essential to life on. Earth and play many important roles in keeping our planet healthy. Most of the world's flowering plants, about 80%, are pollinated by insects. Insects carry pollen from the male parts of a blossom to the female parts of another plant's flower, allowing reproduction. Most of our fruits and vegetables are the result of this kind of plant reproduction. Insects also feed on the remains of dead plants and animals, keeping our environment clean and returning nitrogen, carbon, and other valuable elements to the soil in their waste. In addition, insects are a vital part of Earth's food chain, providing nourishment for one another. There are many thousands of insect-eating insects. 
as well as for reptiles and amphibians, for birds and fish, and for mammals, such as mice and bats. In many parts of the world, insects even make up an important part of the human diet. Why do mosquitoes bite? Just female mosquitoes bite, male mosquitoes feed only on fruit and plant juices. The female mosquito bites people, and other animals, to feed on their blood. She needs blood so that her eggs can develop properly before they are laid. One way a female mosquito locates a victim is by feeling the body heat of an animal as she flies by it. Why do I have to take a bath or shower? Taking a bath or shower does a number of things. It removes some of the germs that your body comes in contact with throughout the day. Germs that come from the air you pass through and from the objects, animals, and people you touch. A good washing of the skin also removes some of the dead cells that makes up its surface. Allowing newer cells to take their place. Washing removes odors that may be caused by sweating, along with water and salt. Perspiration contains waste products from body processes. Certain sweat glands called apocrines release a kind of sweat that can become particularly strong smelling. Today we also wash to look good washing with soap and water is the best way to avoid oily. Dirty skin and hair, and it's generally agreed that those are things we want to avoid. But that wasn't always what people thought. Over the centuries, different people in various parts of the world have done crazy things in the name of personal cleanliness and beauty. A few thousand years ago, for instance, people in Europe washed themselves with mud, scraping it off with an iron tool. They then rubbed oil on themselves because oily skin was considered attractive. And long ago the Gauls of what is now southern France tried to make themselves more appealing by stiffening their hair with a mixture of fat and ash. Unexpectedly, they found that when combined with water their hair mixture made a good soap. Why do mosquito bites itch? With her long, slender mouth parts. A female mosquito pierces the skin of her victim in order to suck its blood. She injects a substance that keeps the blood from clotting, an anticoagulant, before she drinks her fill. This foreign substance in the blood activates the victim's immune system. Causing an allergic reaction around the bite. This reaction causes the swelling and itching that drive us crazy. Why do I pee? Food provides the energy that you need for your body systems to run smoothly. 
Once food is broken down during digestion into small bits of useful substances called nutrients. It passes into your bloodstream. While circulating through your body, nutrients are absorbed by your cells. Where they are used for processes that release energy. As nutrients and energy are used up, chemical waste products are left in your cells. These must be removed or the cells will eventually die. So the cells release waste into your bloodstream the bodies. Transportation system which take the waste to your two kidneys. Containing more than 1 million microscopic filters each. Your kidneys remove waste products like urea from your blood, along with any extra body water. The waste and water mixture that the kidneys produce is called urine. It travels through tubes called ureters to your bladder, a flexible balloon-like structure where urine is temporarily stored before you urinate, or pee. When your bladder has about one cup of urine in it. Stretch sensors located in its wall send fullness signals to your brain, which then directs you to empty it. Why do I have to wipe myself after I go to the bathroom? It is important to wipe yourself after you go to the bathroom for a couple of reasons. First, it keeps your clothes from becoming soiled. Second, it protects your skin from the irritation that can result if traces of urine and feces are left there. Feces contain a lot of bacteria that can multiply once they leave the body especially in areas that are moist and airless, like around your bottom. A rash and sores can result when waste is left on the skin. So wiping helps you stay dry and clean. What causes snoring? When people breathe through their mouths rather than their noses when they sleep. Because the nasal passageways are swollen or stuffed for some reason snoring may occur. The rough. Horse snoring noise results when the soft tissue at the back of the roof of the mouth, called the soft palate, vibrates during breathing. Males snore far more often than females. Scientists think that may be because men are generally bigger and have more tissue in their soft palates. Some people snore so loudly that they wake themselves up. How do bees make honey? Honey bees collect sweet nectar from flowers and bring it back to their nests or hives. There it is stored for future use, for its sugar provides honey bees with the energy they need. The nectar is stored as honey, which is a thick Concentrated form of nectar that has been converted in the bee's digestive tracts. Honey is stored in many little compartments or cells in the nest, called a hive. Which the bees seal over with wax something they also produce. 
We call this honey filled wax honeycomb. Beekeepers take honeycomb from the hive, leaving enough behind for the bees. Using the wax for candle making and the honey to sweeten all kinds of foods. Why do babies and toddlers have to wear diapers? The bodies of babies and little children go through a lot of growing and changing. The ability of little ones to do things like control the activity of their bladder and bowels increases as their muscles and nervous systems develop and mature. When a person's bladder is filled with urine, stretch sensors located in the bladder wall send a message to the brain, which sends back a message to empty it. Still, most people can delay this need to urinate by controlling the urethral sphincter. A muscle located at the opening of the bladder into the urethra, the tube through which urine exits the body. When a child is very young, however, he or she does not yet have this kind of muscle control. In addition, a small child's brain doesn't connect feelings of a full bladder with the urination that comes afterwards. In the bodies of babies and young children, urination happens automatically and often like a reflex and a diaper is needed to keep them and their surroundings clean. Between the ages of 2 and 3, though, children become aware of their body signals and have greater muscle control. And they are able to be potty trained, or taught to use the toilet. Likewise, when a person's rectum is filled with feces, nerve endings there transmit a similar message to the brain, which calls for it to be emptied. Whether the individual has a bowel movement, though, depends on whether he or she consciously relaxes the ring of muscles. Called the anal sphincter, around the anus to allow the passage of feces. Before young children can do this as with urination they must learn to recognize the signals their bodies give them and have good muscle control. What are cold-blooded and warm-blooded animals? cold-blooded, or heterothermic. Animals have a body temperature that is regulated by the temperature of their environment. Such animals including fish, amphibians, and reptiles generally cannot survive in climates of extreme temperatures. When it's very cold, or very hot, outside, Cold-blooded animals cannot function. Warm-blooded, or homeothermic, animals have the ability to maintain the temperature inside their bodies without being affected by changes in outside temperatures. While extremely cold or extremely hot temperatures can cause even warm-blooded animals like mammals and birds to suffer. Their bodies have mechanisms to regulate internal temperature under most conditions. Shivering when you're cold, for example, is your body's way of increasing its temperature. Dogs can release excess heat by panting. And animals that hibernate have ways of slowing down their bodily functions so they can preserve heat.
Where do medicines come from? Medicines or drugs are chemical substances used to prevent, treat, or stop diseases, to heal wounds, and to stop pain. Since ancient times, people have used natural products from plants, animals, and minerals in the earth to help themselves and others. For example, a substance called digitalin, found in the leaves of the flowering foxglove plant, has long been used to help people with heart problems. Likewise, the dried sap of the seed pod of a certain poppy plant, opium, has a long history of use as a powerful painkiller. Even today, about 25% of all the drugs that doctors prescribe and many more medicines that can be bought over the counter, meaning without a prescription are made from plant products. Scientists have yet to explore the full potential of plant-based medicines. Many useful plants come from the world's rainforests, which are unfortunately being destroyed at a rapid rate. Companies that make drugs study the healing effects of natural substances and try to recreate similar substances in laboratories. They test these and other man-made chemicals on samples of diseased and ailing cells. On animals, and sometimes on people over long periods of time. If these substances are shown to be useful. Without causing harmful side effects, they are then sold as new drugs. In the United States, a government agency called the Food and Drug Administration, FDA, controls the testing and marketing of new medicines, making sure that they are safe and effective.